What's up guys? It's been a minute. How you doing? You probably haven't seen my face since my one of my last Hawaii videos. Uh, that's the last time I filmed. Actually, that's a lie. I did film the first day of school vlog again for the start of the spring semester and I just never got around to editing and posting that and I probably never will. But anyway, obviously I'm back today with another video that I am super, super excited about. I haven't filmed a recipe video in such a long time and it's one of my favorite videos to make. It's just a really great creative outlet for me. I love recipe creating and I love cooking and I feel like whenever I'm able to share recipes and make new recipes, it kind of keeps me on track and on focus with my life and my health and my eating patterns and not eating like crap all the time, if that makes sense. But anyway, I do wanna start posting more recipe videos again and starting to talk more about nutrition on this channel because it's what I'm in school for, it's what I do, and so why not start making uh, like healthy, vegan, sometimes vegetarian recipes, I guess, to share with you while also providing some nutritional information that might be useful for you. Basically, my plan for these types of more like nutritionally focused recipe videos is going to be to focus on a specific food that will be incorporated in the recipe. So whether that's a vegetable or a fruit or a grain or anything, it could be anything. And then so I can provide you with some of the nutritional benefits of these foods and how to easily incorporate them into a recipe that maybe you're not familiar with or like for example, today's recipe is using butternut squash and the easy thing to do with butternut squash a lot of the time is just to roast it up and have it on the side as a vegetable for that day. But as you can see from the title of this video, with my butternut squash, I made some gnocchi. Is that how that's pronounced? Everyone pronounces this type of pasta differently, so don't make fun of me if that's not how you say it because I've heard it said so many different ways. But yeah, let's get into the video. butternut squash. It is a winter squash. Um, it is a little bit sweeter than your typical like zucchini or yellow squash. So it's pretty versatile. You can put it into a savory recipe. You can put it into a sweet recipe. I've seen a lot of people make desserts with it. Um, it has very similar characteristics to pumpkin, which is really awesome. And in addition to it being completely versatile for a bunch of different recipes and cooking methods, it is also extremely good for you and provides a lot of nutritional benefit. So in this video and in other future videos, you'll probably hear me refer to some foods as a good source or a excellent source. And there is a difference. They're not just adjectives I'm throwing into my sentence. So if a food is a good source of something, that means it provides 10 to 19% of the daily value of that vitamin or nutrient that you need for the day. And anything that is an excellent source of a vitamin or nutrient uh, provides at least 20%, if not more, of the daily recommended value. So uh, just one cup of butternut squash is a good source of B6, potassium, magnesium, and fiber. And it's an excellent source of vitamin C, providing about half of what you need for the day. And it's also an excellent source of vitamin A, providing over 200% of all the vitamin A that is recommended. And those high amounts of vitamin A are going to be found in a lot of fruits and vegetables that are similar to a butternut squash in color because the vitamin A comes from beta carotene, which is like the yellow, reddish, orange pigment that you see in foods like the butternut squash. So obviously that is a very deep pigment. Um, so, you know, butternut squash, carrots, pumpkin, they're all very high in beta carotenes and therefore they're very high in vitamin A, which is so good for your body. I could go on about vitamin A for a while, but you can do your own research on that if you're interested. And then, so lastly, butternut squash is pretty much low in fat unless you're consuming a really large amount of it in one sitting, you're pretty much not gonna get any fat at all from butternut squash. So that means most of the calories do come from carbohydrates and a little bit of fat, but mostly carbs. And let me just emphasize that it's the good kind of carbs. Bad carbs are added sugar. Carbs from fruits and vegetables are 
totally fine for you. Don't be afraid to eat a butternut squash because it is higher in carbohydrates. You are still eating healthy, I promise. And lastly, before getting into the recipe, I'm just going to go over the macronutrients for the butternut squash gnocchi recipe that I'm giving you today. So the entire recipe makes about three servings. So for each serving, it is about 320 calories, 60 grams of carbohydrate, five and a half grams of fat, and eight grams of protein. So this recipe provides a pretty decent proportion of your macronutrients for a meal. And then as mentioned before, you're also getting pretty good sources of some of your vitamins and minerals. All right, enough of all the sciencey stuff that some of you may not care about. Let's get into the recipe and cook something delicious. The first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So for the pasta portion of this recipe, we're going to be using half of a butternut squash. So that's probably gonna be about two cups when it's cubed if you're buying pre-cut squash. We're also gonna need one to one and a half cups of flour and then a half a teaspoon of salt. For the sauce, we're going to be making a garlic thyme white wine sauce. And for that, we're going to be using half a cup of the leftover pasta water, half a cup of white wine, two to three cloves of garlic, two and a half tablespoons of butter, and about three sprigs of thyme. To get started, if you are using already pre-cut butternut squash, you can skip this step obviously, but if you bought a full squash, make sure to cut it in half. You're going to want to peel the outside until the orange inside is showing. And I like to cut up my squash by slicing down the length across the shorter end and then turning those pieces to cut them into smaller cubes. Once the squash is all cut up, you're gonna to wanna to place it on a cookie sheet or baking tray to roast in the oven for about 20 minutes at 400 degrees until you're able to pierce the pieces with a fork. You could boil the squash and it would probably cook a little bit quicker and get the like tender, more mushy, like mashed potato consistency that we need. However, by boiling foods, a lot of the nutrients tend to leak out. And since we will be cooking the pasta in boiling water later, it's probably a good idea just to take a little extra time and use a dry heat method as opposed to boiling the water and having some nutrients leach out. What's really nice about this recipe is that it is pretty quick. The longest time is kind of just waiting for the butternut squash to finish cooking. So the only other prep work you need to do at this time is chop up or dice up your garlic and then maybe pre-measure out the wine and the butter if you really want to. Once the squash has finished cooking, you wanna take it out of the oven and just let it cool off for a little bit because it's gonna be really hard to work with if it's still extremely hot. But once the squash has cooled down, you're going to want to mash it into a mashed potato-like consistency. I use a fork because I don't have a potato masher, so not gonna lie, this kind of took a while, but if you have a potato masher, it will probably go extremely quick. Next, we're ready to start forming the gnocchi dough, so you can go ahead and add in the flour. I like to do a little bit at a time. It's kind of similar to just, you know, making bread or if you've made pasta dough before, you don't want the dough to be too sticky, but you also don't want it to be too firm, which is why I have like one to one and a half cups as a recommendation, depending on how much squash you actually used, because if you cut it up yourself, <laughs> it might end up being a little bit more or less than two cups. So just start with probably about like half the flour, mix a little bit, and then add more as needed. Once you start adding in the flour, go ahead and mix everything with a wooden spoon. It will eventually get to the point where using your hands is going to be easier, but just be warned that it is going to be sticky. Once your dough has been formed, you can go ahead and put it onto a floured cutting board. And it's kind of hard to tell from this video, but I pretty much just had a still kind of mushy but firm dough ball. If I were to go and break this in half, the inside would still be pretty sticky, but because the outside was covered in flour, that's okay. It, as long as you're able to cut it and form it into pieces and you don't have just glops of <laughs> dough everywhere, then you have the right consistency to make your pasta. Now is also probably a good time to get a pot of boiling water started on the stove. So now that your dough is ready and has a nice flour coating on the outside, you wanna go ahead and cut it into four even sections. and then take each section and roll it out until it's about an inch to a half an inch thick, depending on how big you like the pasta to be.
Once the dough is rolled out, you go ahead and cut sections that are half an inch to an inch thick, depending on the first measurement that you used, and doing this will create your little gnocchi squares. And so you just repeat these steps with the remaining three balls of dough. This next step is completely optional, by no means do you have to do this, but I'm going to show you how to get the little like marks or design onto the gnocchi. I know that a lot of people do this to allow the pasta to really hold the sauce onto it. I will tell you the consistency of the garlic thyme white wine butter sauce that we'll be making will stay onto the pasta no matter what shape it is or no matter what marks are on there. So by all means, if you'd like to do this, go ahead. Otherwise, you can skip this step and just go to boiling the pasta. So to get the grooves onto the gnocchi, you just grab each piece individually and roll it on the back part of a fork. Make sure the pieces are pretty lightly floured as some pieces might end up sticking to the fork if there's no flour there. And so you repeat this process until all your gnocchi have the grooves. By no means will they be perfect. I think that's one of the great things about cooking things at home is the fact that nothing looks perfect and uniform it means that you made it yourself, it's homemade, and that is way cooler than just buying a processed package of pasta at the store. Now it's time to cook our pasta. So depending on how big of a boiling pot of water you have will kind of dictate how much you're able to cook at a time. I would not recommend throwing all the gnocchis into a pot at the same time because they probably will stick together and water will boil over and it'll just be a total mess. So for me, I think it took three separate small plates worth of pasta. And so you're going to take your first batch of pasta and place it into the boiling water for just about two to four minutes. This will depend on the size of the pasta that you have but pretty much you can almost guarantee they're gonna be done once all of the pieces float to the top of the boiling water. So once you first place them in, they go to the bottom, and when they float to the top, they're all done, but you can always pull one out to check if it is completely cooked. Next, you can just ladle out the pieces that are done with a slotted spoon, and then continue this process with the remaining batches of gnocchi. While everything is cooking, you can go ahead and get started on the sauce if you'd like. So you can just take either a small frying pan or a saucepan, whichever you prefer, and add in the butter to melt. And for this recipe, I did use, I can't believe it's not butter vegan, but of course you can use Earth Balance or whatever butter you prefer. Anything that melts nicely will work. Once the butter has melted, you can go ahead and add in your chopped garlic and let this simmer until the garlic becomes a little bit softened and everything becomes super fragrant. And as mentioned before, we're going to be using some of the leftover pasta water for the sauce. Once your pasta has finished cooking, you can scoop out about a half a cup and pour it into the butter and garlic mix Mixture. You can use just regular water, however, if you're using um, water that has already been cooking pasta, the starch content is most likely going to thicken up your sauce. And for someone like me who likes a little bit of a thicker, creamier sauce, you can add in a little bit of extra flour like I did here, but if you like a thinner consistency, you can skip this step. Once the sauce reaches a simmer, you can go ahead and add in two of the thyme sprigs so they can begin to cook down and the flavor really works itself into the butter and water. Next, add in a half a cup of white wine. I just used a Pinot Grigio, and you'll wanna continue to cook the sauce for about five to seven minutes to allow the alcohol content to cook out. Now we're pretty much done. I would just recommend removing the thyme sprigs that are in the sauce. Toss in the gnocchi and completely coat it in your sauce, and then you are ready for plating. Me personally, I really like the flavor of thyme, so I took a third sprig and broke off all the leaves, chopped it up, and sprinkled it onto my mixture, but by all means, you do not have to do that. You definitely will get the thyme flavor just from the sauce, and now you're ready to enjoy it. All right, so that is the full recipe for my butternut squash gnocchi in a white wine garlic thyme sauce. It's kind of a mouthful, but I hope you are inspired to make this. If you do, please let me know down in the comments. Also, I apologize if I was kind of all over the place with explaining this video. As I was filming, there was 
like utility workers climbing up and down a ladder, literally in the window I'm standing in front of um, doing work. So if you heard any of their voices or loud noises, I apologize, but I didn't want to stop filming because I already put makeup on and who knows when I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're looking for more food related topics and information and life things, Go ahead and check out my Instagram page if you want, or you don't have to, I don't really care. And I will see you at the next video.